Um, of course, we start with your dollar as it is the most popular currency pair and I think everyone wants to hear about euro dollar first. Um, I like this pair a lot too. And let's start with the weekly chart. We can see that after a very strong, a very big bullish candle, uh, which was formed not last week, but a week before that. Um, last week's candle resembles the so-called shooting star. Uh, we can see that um, the euro tested levels at 1.1268, but failed to close at this high and uh, ultimately closed the week in the negative territory at 1.1180. This is certainly um, a sign that the bulls were not ready to continue uh, the breakthrough. And after such candles, usually uh, we get um, some attempts on the market to test lower levels in order to gather the buyers for the new movement to the upside at least. So um, looking at this chart, it is natural to focus on levels like 1.1135, this is a Fibonacci level, and the next level is at 1.1070. This is the upper border of the Ishimoku cloud, which is currently um, bearish on the weekly chart. So um, this is the weekly picture. Uh, when we switch to the daily chart, uh, we can see that I have here my favorite indicator for the weekly analysis. This indicator is called pivot points multi time frame. Probably like this, it will be seen better. We can see that um, here the levels uh, of resistance are rather close to each other, resistance and support, the first red and the first blue levels. They form the range between 1.1245 and 1.1138. Um, the levels are rather close as during the past week the volatility in the euro dollar has decreased. So the uh, scope of this uh, variation for the euro dollar provided by the indicator has also decreased. The weekly pivot point is located at um, 1.12 and as long as we stay below this level, um, it is said that the overall um, dominance at the market is by the bears and uh, the pair is vulnerable to test uh, lower levels. The weekly pivot indicator provides us with the downside targets at 1.1138, 1.1096 and 1.1030. These are a bit um, different, you see, from what we had from the weekly chart. And um, one can combine these levels, um, maybe draw them on the four-hour chart in order not to miss um, anything um, important, not to miss important levels. We can see that on the daily chart, chat, chart MACD, MACD indicator is uh, declining and is getting ready to get below the signal line. And also, stochastic indicator is also going to the downside. So, um, some not very positive <clears throat> picture here. Um, if we have a look at um, the daily chart with some moving averages and with Ishimoku as well, we'll see that the actual, the general trend is positive. 
still positive, there is a positive intersection of the moving averages on the euro dollar chart. The 50 day moving average went above 200 day moving average, and the lines are getting ready to um, make a positive setup. But the current prices are rather far away from the moving averages. So um, there is the scope for the prices to return a bit lower, to return a bit closer to the moving averages, as it as usually happens um, during trends. So we don't have in all the time the directional move. We have uh, the phases when the market is moving in line with the trend and then we have corrections when the market is kind of returning to the average uh, levels and um, this is also uh, confirming the case that uh, the pair may test levels around 1.11, 1.1070 and maybe 1.1030 this will be good targets which are in line with the overall bullish bias for the euro dollar if we are uh, talking about the fundamental picture for the single currency then it is necessary to remember that the fundamental outlook is mainly positive as we have um, significant decline in political risks in the euro area we have uh, positive economic data and some fingers are really impressive. For example, German IFO business climate indicator, which was um, released last week, rose to the record high. And we know that Germany is the main economy of the euro area. So this has to tell us much that the uh, German economy and the European economy is healthy. Also, there were flash PMIs, manufacturing and services PMIs for the euro area. These were data for May. And these advanced, these leading indicators showed us that the European economy is really, really strong. So uh, these are bullish factors for the euro dollar and some bearish factors may come from the Temporal strength, temporary strengthening of the US dollar. Uh, in addition, um, some um, factors connected with the policy of the European Central Bank may also pull the euro dollar lower for a short time period. The case with the European Central Bank is the following um, the pressure for the ECB to start declining its massive monetary stimulus is now building and uh, in fact there are several positions within the European Central Bank one of the top ECB members said that it is necessary to not to hurry with reduction in stimulus but other you know, top member of the European Central Bank, on the other hand, said that if the European Central Bank waits too long with a reduction in monetary stimulus, then the situation may get worse. So uh, this week we'll find out what the European Central Bank's President Mario Draghi thinks on this issue. Mario Draghi will speak later today. Uh, he will speak to the European Parliament and I hope that his position may clarify the situation a bit and um, well traders will get a better sense of what to expect from the European Central Bank's June 8th meeting which will be next week so this book will have a kind of preparation for from the European Central Bank and it will be interesting whether Mario Draghi acknowledges this positive developments in the EU area or he still sounds cautious. If he sounds cautious then um, we'll see um, some covering in bullish euro positions and the European currency will um, 
test global levels, it will go towards 1.10. On the other hand, if Draghi admits that, well, all is better in the euro area, then we'll get, I think, another goal for level uh, around 1.10. Uh, 13 and maybe higher, 1.13.50, 1.14. Um, we know that the European Central Bank is not usually really um, interested in making the euro expensive. So Draghi is known um, by his ability to talk the euro down. Uh, we'll see whether he waits for the next week for the European Central Bank's meeting to do so or of whether he um, will just want to use the unpredictability side and to drop some surprise, to drop some bomb at the market today. So this is why I think we should be very attentive in trading the euro. Um, and technically, I think that the euro wants to get to lower levels. So I would consider um, this um, correction to the downside as the main scenario for the near term. Our days of the week will also bring some data on Tuesday, focus on German preliminary CPI. On Wednesday, we'll get flash inflation figures for the entire euro area, as well as German retail sales, and some Spanish figures on Thursday and Friday. This is, of course, less important than uh, data releases on Wednesday.